Tidding. I am. Right. Let's do this. So, so many kids, kids in the kitchen. Plant-based food to prepare. So many kids in the kitchen. With ideas we're happy to share. Welcome everybody. My name is Dilla Barman. I'm in Durham, North Carolina. I'm a Food for Life instructor. Food for Life is a nutrition education program of the Physicians Committee. We have classes to help keep you healthy. And if you end up not being so healthy, um, ideas in the kitchen that can help you improve your health. So today we're excited to have another one of our So Many Kids in the Kitchen programs. Um, we have about 30 Food for Life instructors who are cooks in the kitchen, and we do monthly shows um, on um, plant-based nutrition, and we go kitchen to kitchen, cooking very, um, hopefully very tasty and interesting and healthy dishes. And every other month, we have the kids in the kitchen. A few of us have children, ages 4 through 12, and uh, they are excited to share as well. So today, our theme is summer foods. What a great time when a lot of kids are about to be out from school or are out from school, and it's a great time to get in the kitchen. So we have our recipes, we have shared them, and we encourage you with your kids in your life to cook along with us. Um, we also have some notes in the recipes from Brenda Davis, registered dietitian, one of my favorite nutritionists, about summer foods. I'm very excited because the kids, and we have children in Omaha, Nebraska, in Providence, Rhode Island, and my own daughter here in Durham, North Carolina, joining us today. So if you think about kids in summer, summer foods, you think about things like hot dogs and hamburgers, and we're going to be seeing those presented to us today from uh, Ava and Ella and their helper, Nora, in Nebraska. Uh, you think of a nice dessert, and so in, um, in Providence, Rhode Island, we're going to have Mia and Max making mousses and I'll let them tell you about the special origin of these mousses, where these came from, from uh, some important people in the plant-based movement. And finally, my daughter, when you think of summer, is going to be making popsicles. So the kids are all ready, their hands are washed, they're excited, and I'm going to bring on um, the Ava and Ella and their little sister, Nora. Once they're done, they're going to go to me and Max and then Anuragni, and then we'll have Q&A. But throughout the program, feel free to post your questions. But we'll all be together at the end for Q&A. So with that, Ava, Ellen, Nora, take it away. Look forward to seeing what you guys have to do. Hi, I'm Ava. I'm Ella. I'm not. And today, I'm going to be making Portobello mushroom burgers. Nora, you want to help me? First, you want four large Portobello mushrooms. And you have to clean these and take off the stems. Laura, you want to help me with this? Yeah. Then you want some water. Mm -hmm. and one cup water. Mm -hmm. A teaspoon of onion powder. A half teaspoon of dried parsley leaves. Um. A fourth teaspoon of paprika. Three tablespoons balsamic vinegar. Two tablespoons. Here. Two tablespoons soy sauce. I'm going to help with this one. A teaspoon of minced garlic, which is about two garlic cloves. And then a half teaspoon of vegetable bouillon. This helps get that burger started. Or you want to help me mix it up? Yeah. Mushrooms are really healthy for you. They're a super food. Also, experts recommend eating at least five bun mushrooms a day to reduce risk of neurological illness. Nora, you want to help me brush this on? Yeah. 
I'm going to pour it in here, and then you're going to help me brush it on, okay? Mm. You have to stack up the mushrooms in a pan and pour some marinade into each of them. Make sure you put them gill side up so the marinade will really soak in. Nora, you help me brush this on? Yeah. Here, you can use a brush and brush all over the mushrooms. Make sure to get the good outside, too. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Sacks. Alright, I think that's good. <laughs> can you put it back in the bowl, Nora? So once you have the marinade all over the mushrooms, you want to let them sit for about 20 to 30 minutes. And then you take them out to the grill when they're done. If you've seen the promo video we did before the show, you'll know how to grill them. You want to cook them on top on the top rack for about five minutes each side until they're a bit tender with grill marks. This is what fit, this is what finished one looks like. Make sure to have an adult help you when you're grilling them, and they should be doing most of the work. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to make carrot dogs. So first, we're going to make the sauce for them. We need, well, first you need eight large carrots, which I have. I'll just put them inside out. Here, there's my eight large carrots. Then you need eight hot dog buns for the afterwards part. Whole grain preferred. A one cup of soy sauce or tamari. And this I'm just starting with um, two cups of water. Can I mix it in? No, we're not ready yet. And then two tablespoons liquid smoke. Can you make me sure? Because I am. And then two tablespoons steak sauce or vegan Worcestershire sauce. Two tablespoons maple syrup. Nope. This is the two tablespoons of maple syrup. And then two tablespoons ketchup or tomato paste. Here, can I do this one? Mm -hmm. This is ketchup. Dry now, though. And then we already have our two cups of water. So then you want to whisk it. And then you're going to want to put it in a large sauce pan. And then you're going to want to put deep heat until boiling reduce heat to medium simmer and cook until carrots are just barely fork tender eight to ten minutes depending on thickness remove from heat and let set for 15 minutes and then serve with desired toppings so i'm just going to show you how to peel it you want to get like what this part looks off. I like to call it the rough part. I'd usually be doing this over a trash can though. And then you want to make the top and the bottom 
roundish. And then it go with the rest of the carrots. And then we put them into the sauce. And a finished one would look like this. The color's a little bit different. It's softer and it's a little bit darker than before. I like... I like my um, carrot dogs plain, but you can put anything else on it. Um, my favorite dish, or one that I like with carrot dogs, is strawberries and blueberries. Next, the next ones to go are our friends, me and Max, in Providence, Rhode Island, and I'm so excited to see what they made. Thank you for teaching us how to make those yummy carrot dogs. I mean, who needs carrot dogs? I mean, who needs hot dogs when you have carrot dogs? Sorry, got a little tongue twisted. Anyways, um, today we are going to be making, you know, we didn't introduce ourselves. So if you haven't seen, if this is your first time watching So Many Kids in the Kitchen, I'm Mia and I'm Max. And today we are going to be making um, I'm going to be making lime mousse, and Max is going to do lime mousse. Blueberry mousse and lime <laughs> mousse. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. Just so you know, Mia's going to make lime mousse with the lime flavor, and I'm going to make blueberry mousse. I think we need that. Okay, so the first, thing, the first ingredient you're going to need is silken tofu. So it, you have to make sure it is silken and either... It is either extra firm, like or mine, firm, like mine. Because if you go regular soft, it this is going to turn out way too runny and it is going to fall apart and not be a um, mousse anymore. So, um, while I'm cutting this, I'm going to say that these recipes. Um, so me and Max are watching a YouTube video one day, um, and. Uh, Jane and Anne Esselstyn, um, they were doing that video, and I really, I really liked how it turned out. So I just decided to cook it today. So mine's is taking some time to cut. I don't know why. I mean, Can maybe I'm just not a good cutter. Um, but one thing after you cut the tofu box open, there's going to be some liquid and you'll, you'll notice that right away. So you're going to hold the tofu inside and I spilled a little bit, but you know, that's, that's okay because we're in the kitchen. So just, I'm just going to pour my liquid in this bowl, make sure none of it is still in here and just plop it in here. And it just came out clean. So if you want to, um, if you really don't like liquid, and it doesn't really matter, but if you just want to um, wait overnight, you can, and you just put it in like a clean dish towel, and um, then you pop it in the refrigerator, and it will, the dish towel will um, like soak up all of the um, water, and then you'll be good to go next morning. So now I'm just going to plop my tofu in. There you go. And we're going to add our next ingredient. So our next ingredient is going to be maple syrup. And we're going to add one third of it for each. So right now we're opening the maple syrup, as you can see. And Yum. My personal favorite out of these two versions is the lime mousse, but I I made the lemon mousse and it was still so good. So I, I mean, uh, blueberry, and they were still so good. Um, one of my favorite things, um, if you guys have Facebook, you might have noticed that um, I have been, my mom has been posting pictures of 
the blueberry mousse and me having like put pineapple all over it and like lemon basil and just a bunch of like peach and all these different um, fruits and stuff and that's what we're going to do today also we are going to decorate our um, mousses with fruits like we have raspberries mango and cherry and strawberries so you'll and see these later on and some banana yep and some banana so next i'm going to take my lime and make sure you wash it before you use it this is already washed so i'm just going to start zesting it in there when max tells you his stuff so i'm going to put two cups of blueberries i already measured it so that's why it's not in too bad. so i'm going to pour this in and after I pour this in, I'm going to blend it and I'm going to blend it while Mia's zesting it. So, let's do that right now. Make sure you get like a big amount of zest because trust me, it will be so good and you'll be like, ah, I'm in candy roll right now. Three, two, one. Just switch places because I'm going to need to blend. Scoot, scoot, scoot. Okay, so one thing, um, you don't really, because I had no, like, I didn't have enough time to zest all this, but just pretty much zest um, the whole line. I, I got some, it looks like it has some bald spots on it, but I am just going to take a few more little runs and then um, make sure you have most of it in there so you can just do a quick wipe with your fingers and then um next step is you're going to cut this lime in half and while mia's doing that i'm going to um open my banana and start cutting it i like to open it from the bottom because it's just easier so yeah isn't that how gorillas do it though yeah yeah that's what we learned from the gorilla okay so now I'm just going to squeeze all this lime juice in here as much as you can. This is where your muscles come in, so make sure you will work up, um, work out. That's part of this cooking lesson. <laughs> okay. Okay. That is good enough for this one and the other one. Okay. That's why we have the blender right here. Awesome. Okay. So we have enough um, zest and juice in here. So now we are going to blend it up. Banana bottom layer. Is that what you're doing? Yeah. Cool. Banana bottom. All right. And start to blend it now. I'm just going to turn it here because... And that didn't even take a lot of time. So now I'm just going to get a quick rag and sweep up this blueberry here that Max left. And now I am going to decorate mine. So now, since I put the bottom layer, I'm going to put the second layer. No, no now I'm going mousse. to put the mousse. Because well, our names aren't covering it. Now I'm going to put the mousse. And I'm going to use this to help me scrape it out. 
if there's any more to scrape out. I'm going to directly use the mousse on here, and I love making these things look fancy. So I'm just going to smooth it out. And we're going to be doing two for you. Um, so first one, I am going to outline with some raspberries here. We are actually growing raspberries and blackberries at the moment, but unfortunately, they're not ready yet. They're not ready yet, so we just bought some from the store. So I'm going to be putting some strawberries now for another layer, another layer just of strawberries, like I did the banana layer. This reminds me of decorating cake. Yeah. And last but not least, my cherry on top. I'm just going to take that part of the spit them off. Oops. And now I have my second layer. Now we need to add some more mousse. And we have tiny little baby spoons, which I love, by the way. Oh, that turned out really dark, like darker than most. Don't add too much, it's gonna overflow. Then just stick your spoon in there, and um, now I'm going to decorate my second one. So for my second one, I think I want the same thing, but I, except I want to do a banana version because I think this would really go good with bananas. So now I'm going to add a layer of raspberries. Actually, I'm going to do what Mia did, a circle of raspberries, and the two except, except I'm going to leave space in between each raspberry for a mango. Oops. That's okay. And I'm just going to do a little bit of strawberries because I like strawberries. And stick them deeply in there and um, just so you guys can see, I'm going to put that there. And yeah, so I did a little bit of strawberries. Now I'm going to, I really, I do this a lot, but I just need to cut up my mango. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to reach under you. Yeah, this is not probably the best idea. And chop up this little mango here into little tiny pieces. So now I'm going to add my strawberry layer for this one. Before I do that, I'm just gonna add a cherry. And I'm top just that. gonna drizzle them on top. So that's how the finished product's gonna look for this one. I just need to do it. Then I'm going to add some banana and um, I don't really know what I'm gonna do with banana, but I am creative, so I am just going to take two slices of banana and uh, put them on each side of the strawberry, so it's like a symmetrical throne thing. I don't know what I'm doing. Um, so now I'm going to put my second layer of mousse. That's like a crown. Yeah. On top of this. You're doing a lot of layering. No, just two layers. I mean, so. Now I have my two ones done. My raspberry and cherry and my banana mango uh, strawberry. Now I'm just going to add my raspberries. And as you can see, that one's messed up. But it does not mess up the taste. No, it does not. So now I'm going to add my mango. I was looking. I was um, going for the mango like to stick in all the way and like have a tiny thing popping out like this smaller than that one but this one looks good at the end so I'm going to do the same and before I do anything I'm going to taste test my nice. this one with the raspberry uh, now I just need to add my cherry. This is so good, you guys. And need to try this. Stick my spoons in there. Now I'm going to try my blueberry mousse, and we'll switch because I want to taste that. And um, one quick thing. Mm. You can pop it into so the refrigerator good. if you want. 
a few hours before you eat it and because that will make it nice and refreshing. Anyways, now we're going to pass it on to Anu and North Carolina. Hi. Mia and Max, those, those mousses look excellent and I'm definitely going to try them. Um, so today I'm going to be making um, watermelon blueberry popsicles. And um, by the way, my name is Anu and I live in North Carolina. Um, yeah, so I really love these popsicles. Um, and I'm just going to show you today how easy it is to make homemade popsicles. So for this recipe, you need one medium piece of watermelon, some blueberries, some lemon, and optionally some mint and some dates. Um, so I'm going to start with my watermelon. going to cut it off its skin and you might want to ask an adult to help you with this because you don't want to cut yourself and it can be a little hard to cut sometimes did I cut it all the way off good enough okay so, I'm going to put this watermelon in the Vitamix. Oh, whoops. Um, I spilled some juice, but that's okay. Um, by the way, watermelon is actually a lot healthier than most people think. I was really surprised to learn at how many benefits watermelon has. Um, watermelon is the best source of lycopene, which is good for your health, and it helps fight cancer, which is kind of amazing, I think. And it's also the best source of citrulline, which lowers your blood pressure. And I think citrulline is like mainly in this white part here. Um, yeah. And it's also very hydrating because it has a lot of water in it. And water is very good for you. Um, and it reduces muscle soreness also. So like if if you had a, like, if you did some hard exercising or you went swimming and your muscles are sore and then you eat watermelon afterwards, that's really good because it helps your muscles. And I was really surprised by how healthy watermelon is. So I'm going to put this in the compost. Oh, it doesn't fit in the compost, so I'll just leave it here for now. Um, next, I'm going to add one half cup of blueberries. Yeah. Okay, I think that's about a half cup. There's no harm in adding more. Okay, I'm also going to put this in my blender. Oh, wait, hold on. Before you use fruits, be sure to wash them. So I'm going to wash them right now. So just kind of put water on them and then pour it out. And when you pour, when you pour it out, be sure not to drop any. So I just put my hand like here and then pour it. So I catch any falling blueberries. So that's half a cup of blueberries. And I'm going to add some lemon. You can also use lime.
I'm sorry we're having some technical difficulties. We don't have a video signal. You can hear Anu, but you can't see her. So I think we're getting that fixed. <laughs> sorry about that. So while you don't have video, oh, here we come. I think Anu will be joining us. Sorry about that. There we go. Well, that was actually quite fortunate for me since I forgot to get dates. So while that camera was black, I got my opportunity. Um, so I'm going to add three dates. Um, I'm adding dates for an, a little extra sweetness. Um, so when you put dates in your blender, make sure that they don't have any pits. So, so I'm sorry about the technical difficulties. I think um, a news mom's phone is being used for the broadcast and people are calling her. <laughs> so here comes, I see a live image again. There you go, Anu. Okay, um, anyhow, uh, even if you buy pitted dates, you want to be sure that there isn't any seeds inside because sometimes machines can miss some seeds. So um, just open the date like this and put it in. By the way, we grew the mint in our garden, um, and you want maybe eight to ten leaves of mint. And sometimes, I'm about to blend this. Sometimes when you blend it, the watermelon doesn't get blended, so I think it might be a good idea to cut it into pieces so that the blender can blend it more easily. I'm just going to take the watermelon out. Or you can just cut it with your hands like this. Like that. And it can also be fun to play with watermelon. Because last time I made it, the watermelon didn't get blended. So. Now I'm going to blend it, and it's going to be really loud for a second, so, well, until I'm done blending it, so more than a second. So see how the watermelon didn't get cut with the blades? So, I'm going to open the top and put this in. And this um, helps push the watermelon down. And keep blending it until you think everything is solid. I think I heard some things being... Okay, I think everything's now liquid. Um, so now, for this recipe... Uh... Someone was again calling my mom. Um. And um, blueberries stain, so you want to be careful not to spill this on the counter. And especially this, because it has the, the juice in on it, so I'm just going to put it on my cutting board for now. So I'm going to pour it into my popsicle molds. Hey, 
I did that perfectly. And of course, I jinxed myself. Drat it. Okay, that's okay. I'll clean it up with this. When you're cooking, it's always good to have a towel nearby. Um, so as you can see, it makes four popsicles with a little leftover to drink. And actually, I think this can be filled a bit more. See, I did jinx myself. Okay, and now... I'm going to put these in. So these um, are like the sticks that you hold. So when you take the popsicle out, it comes like this, and then you can eat it. <laughs> um, also, sometimes it can be hard to take these out, so you might want to ask your parents to help. Um, and sometimes you pull the stick out and it comes out without the popsicle. So, a good, um, a good way to make sure that doesn't happen is don't use these. Instead, use a spoon. And so just stick it in here. And it doesn't matter what angle it goes at. Um, it's, it, uh, even if it goes like diagonally, that's good because when, when the um, juice freezes and then you pull it out, then it'll pull out diagonally and it'll more likely come all the way up. So a spoon is a really good thing to use. So put this in your freezer. I don't think I can put it in my freezer since my freezer is so full right now. But um, and then wait like maybe a day or so and then it should be frozen and then you can enjoy your popsicle. So I made a batch um, on Tuesday and I'm going to just try it so that I can show you how yummy it is. Okay, and this is where the fourth stick went, um, so which is why I had to use a spoon. Uh, and yeah. Mmm. So good. So cold, so sweet, so yummy. You should definitely make this because I really like these. Um, and I hope you enjoyed watching our, our, our recipes and watching us cook. And Ava, Ella, and Nora, you all did a great job. Mia and Max, I loved your recipes. I'm going to make all of your recipes. And um, I hope you enjoyed watching mine. So now, next, we're going to go to the Q&A. Great, that looks wonderful. And you're right next to me nearby. I can, I can see the popsicles. Uh, I have to tell you, I'm lucky that Anu is my daughter because I, uh, I wish that uh, we were all one big family so I could try what um, Ava and Ella made as well and me and Max, but Anu made these popsicles. She's, she's made them for a few summers and they're really good. The thing I like about them is there's no added sugar. There's no added sweetness. It's just the fruit sugar. Uh, and if you want, as she did, uh, you could add some date. Uh, so it's all fruit and it's plenty sweet. It's really good <laughs> and very refreshing. So let's have Q and A. So here are folks from Nebraska and from Rhode Island and you're here too, wonderful. So um, I wanted to start off, we invite people who are watching to share their questions and I had a few to start with. Um, so um, I wanted to ask you guys in Omaha about your um, grilling. So some people who are vegan who are plant-based um, prefer not to uh, eat on grills where there's been meat, for example. So is that something that you guys um, uh, do anything about when you grill foods? Yeah, our grill hasn't had meat on it for years, so and it's thoroughly cleaned. And yeah, we just we just don't grill meat on ours anymore at all. So 
Um, but yeah, I mean, if that's something that people have to run across, you don't want like the cross contamination, you would need to clean or have a separate space on your grill for your, your meat section and a space for your veggies or your burger section. So it's best to keep them separate if you can. So I've also heard tricks about putting some covering on the, the grill. So. Yeah, I want to try that. I think there's like a silicone mat that you can get and it's on my radar to get hopefully soon because I make barbecue tofu and you can even spray the grill and that that really sticks nicely to the grill or not nicely, whatever you want to call it. But it's it's tough to get off that tofu and a lot of times it kind of like destroys it, taking it off. Um, so that's that's on my list to get, Bill, if it's one of those mats to put down first. So. One thing, you know, when I was much younger that was typically used was aluminum foil, but of course we understand that heating aluminum next to food is not necessarily a good thing. Uh, and so uh, there may be better choices than aluminum foil. I, I like the idea of the silicon mat. Um, one thing that I wanted to ask uh, me and Max, maybe with your mom's help, is you talked about the Esselsteins and they're legendary, very, very important, Caldwell Esselstein. He was an, uh, he was an Olympic uh, swimming medal winner and uh, he has shown over and over how to reverse heart disease with plant-based diets. So he promotes the same kind of food we do, limited fat, plant-based eating. But I wanted to ask you guys, and then maybe your mom can pitch in, um, what, you, um, what uh, has inspired you to, uh, with their recipes, what you like about their recipes, and maybe mom, Ella, you could talk a little bit about the Esselsteins. Sure. Um, I just like how um, because their YouTube channel, it's just the mom and the daughter cooking, and they're very funny, and they just do things. Um, the, the way that they make food, I feel like it's they take time to explain each step, and it's just so good. So, yeah. Yeah, and not that just it's healthy, right? But it's, it's also yum. It's also yummy, and it's funny. So um, I think I was, I don't even know, how did you end up seeing them? I don't know how oh, they yeah. found it. I was watching something and then- No, you were watching them. Okay. I and was... then I popped into the kitchen and because you were like, Mia, can you help me make something? And then I saw this video coming up, like, because you guys know on YouTube, if after you watch a YouTube video, it'll say like next and then like a cancel button under. So it just went without us knowing. And then we, we just started watching it and then we just decided like, we were like, hey, maybe we can try this recipe sometimes. And then we just um, over time kept on watching more of their videos and more and more and more and more and more and more, and more. Um, to this point where we were like watching them all the time and making the lime and blueberry mousses. Yep. So they really got inspired when they sat, they found it. They said, okay, we have to save this and we have to try it. We're going to do it. They just jumped in the kitchen. They got the ingredients and they did it. Um, and yes, actually, I was very lucky to meet Dr. Assistant. He came to um, Providence a couple of years ago when he did a presentation at a vegan restaurant, Plant City, um, over here. So I was, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> I don't think I told them. Um, so I was very lucky to meet him and hear him speak um, live. And I just love Jane and Anne. And I love the way um, Jane explains. She has a great video on explaining the diabetes. Um, and they have this great, great recipe, um, balsamic vinegar, a salad dressing called 321, which is three um, serving. So if you're doing, you know, a little bit, three tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, two of mustards, and one of maple syrup, and that's it. So whenever somebody's asking me for a salad dressing, that's like the one that I recommend, the three to one. So yeah, they're just very inspiring. The whole family, Ripa Assistant, has a great TED talk. Um, yeah, I can't talk about enough about them. Um, yeah, so one more thing. If they're watching this, <laughs> then big thanks to them. Big, big, big thanks to them if they're watching this. Yes, they're changing a lot of people's lives, including ours, right? So they can just be sneakily watching this, not putting anything on top. <laughs> you know what's really cool about the Esselstein? So uh, Dr. Esselstein has a way that, and, and many other people have talked about reversing heart disease and you don't have to be vegan just to reverse heart disease. Going plant-based vegan is great for so many conditions. 
but Dr. Esselstyn offers, I believe for free, any doctor who wants to uh, go to his clinic in Cleveland, he's retired from the Cleveland Clinic, I think you can contact him and I think for free, he hosts these weekend retreats to show you how in turn you can show your um, patients how to eat this way and, and often check and reverse heart disease. He's wonderful. Do you remember Anu when you were very young, you were maybe four years old, I took Anu to see Dr. Esselstyn speak as well and she raised her hand and she asked a question uh, about one of his- uh, I thought it was such a dumb question. No, it was a great, it was one of his charts. He had the scientific chart about enzymes or something and she had a question which was great. <laughs> you know, four or five or six or something like that. So you, you've met him as well and he liked your question. <laughs> So um, yeah, he has a wonderful program for, um, for, for this. Um, um, so I, I knew your popsicles I love and thanks for letting me sneak a bite in. It was delicious. I, You're not welcome. <laughs> <laughs> so um, um, I, we've had commercial popsicles and they're way too sweet. This doesn't seem to be missing anything. It has, it's rich in flavor and it has, uh, it's, it's plenty sweet. Do you agree? Yeah. What happens when you go and you eat a commercial popsicle that has sugar added to it? I get hyper. <laughs> but in terms of flavor. It doesn't really have, it's like kind of like, if I get like a fruit popsicle, I don't taste the fruit. It's just like sugar. Mm -hmm. um, I really like this because I can t taste watermelon and blueberry and mint and everything. Oh, and I forgot to add, you can... Add strawberries to this if you want to. Yeah, and we have some strawberries, I think, don't we? No, we don't. Yeah. I looked when the camera went out. Oh, okay. Sorry that the camera kept going out. Um, so, um, can you talk a little bit about organic? So, we in in our food for life classes, we don't emphasize organic. We uh, people can eat as they wish. My family does eat primarily organic. So, can you talk a little bit about organic? Yep. Um, organic is we basically eat all organic. And organic is not using pesticides, and pesticides are bad because they pollute the water, um, and they also hurt animals because water, the, the pesticides, when it rains, it runs into the creeks and rivers, and then the fish get hurt, and the birds who eat the fish get hurt, and it's not a natural thing at all so it's not very good for the environment and yeah so we don't we we don't eat foods with pesticides and we eat organic i wanted to share an interesting point so one thing that in food for life our classes and we also have and maybe cody you can put up the website for fflclasses.org but um, um our classes, we have a kid's class as well, and we have adult classes. We have uh, classes. In a few minutes, maybe I'll have Ella talk about our classes, but they're evidence-based. Everything we do is based on a solid, strong body of, uh, you know, bodies of evidence. Um, so one, one year, it was like three or four years ago at Duke University, um, I do a lot of nutrition classes there. I was asked to give a class, and they said, talk about what you'd like. So I talked about plant-based nutrition, and then talk about a controversial topic, a short talk on con controversial topic. And I did, I picked organic. So I, I, I want to say this, that it turns out, I agree with everything Anuragini said, uh, but it turns out that the evidence from a health point of view isn't there yet. So um, organic doesn't make a difference in health outcomes, at least according to the research today. So from an evidence point of view, we can't say from a health point of view, eat organic. But Anu pointed out that you have environmental degradation and I am personally convinced it's just a matter of time uh, you know, I think eating food that hasn't been contaminated with chemicals has to be better for you than that which has. And so, uh, but strictly speaking, from an evidence point of view, we don't have evidence that there's a there's a health difference. Um, there was a great question that just came up, uh, and Eli and I apologize if I mispronounce your name, Elyri Lincoln. So Elyri asked uh, a very good question, and we'll go around starting with um, you guys in Omaha. Have you always been vegan? Changes are hard. And it's, it's hard for anybody, even, you know, as vegans, if we decide to make a change, like when I, before I became a Food for Life instructor, I always used oil in my cooking. And um, once I became a Food for Life instructor, I learned ways that you don't need oil. It's pure fat. I'd rather use fat for other foods than oil. So it was a change and it was a palate change for my whole family. And we're used to it now. But, uh, but Ms. Lincoln had commented, how about you kids? Have you always been vegan? And if not, how did you make the, the change? 
So uh, in Omaha, um, can Ella and Ava, do you have anything to share about that? Well, we haven't always been vegan. It actually started after mom was picked. She did like a recipe demonstration, got picked to do her food for life classes. So when she came back, our whole family kind of started transitioning. That was about a year or two ago. A couple years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we just slowly started eating more vegetables and less meat. But yeah, that's an answer. Um, it's not that hard. You just might miss some things after you trans, like after you're newly kind of a little bit transitioned. But over time, you'll find different substitutes that you like better. They're kind of like the carrot dogs. Yeah. That's a good substitute, a healthy substitute versus the actual, you know, original hot dogs that are not healthy, actually harm your health. And we got Portobello burgers, which is also a wonderful substitute. So, yeah, there's you can still have the, the burgers and the dogs. It's just a healthy version. So it's still a lot of fun and um, easy to cook, as you can see, the kids can do it, except for the actual, the grill work, you know, which an adult needs to be present for that so nobody gets injured. Um, but I feel like the, the kids did a really good job transitioning. And, um, you know, and it's just, you just got to keep presenting it to the kids. It takes, I think, kids about eight to ten times to try something new before they really like something. So just be consistent. Set a really good example for them. Have things available. Have things cut up and ready to eat so you can just pull it out of the refrigerator. Involve the kids in the process is another big thing because if kids are going to work to put something together to eat, they're more apt to try it and, and taste it and say, hey, this is really beautiful and it tastes delicious. And you know what? It's actually very healthy for you. So... That's that's what we have come to find. So. How about little sister? How about Nora? Has she always been vegan? And what has her transition been like, if not? Uh, pretty much the same as the other two. So about two years ago. So half her life, you know, now she's been vegan. And um, but yeah, she just she she seemed actually even easier than the other two. You know, I don't know if it's just because she's had less amount of years of eating the other products that it was just easier for her. I don't know, but she she really took on and she really loves those vibrant colors, which you only pretty much find in your fruits and vegetables. So that's a good point. Um, and you know, Cody made a really interesting point about transitioning. So we have foods we call transition foods. So we have hot dogs and sausages and burgers that are all vegan. There's fish products, they're not fish, they're plant-based. So uh, generally these are far better choices than the animal foods. They still aren't optimal. They often have high levels of sodium, for example, and they're processed, but they're a great step. And <clears throat> occasionally, <clears throat> like a new, when she goes, when you go camping, you like to have uh, vegan hot dogs. So uh, again, they're not the best choice. They're not that bad. <clears throat> I think a link of vegan hot dogs that <clears throat> we buy, we buy them like twice a year is something like five grams of fat. We recommend any one food have three grams of fat, so it's still not too bad. How about you guys in Providence? Me and Max, have you always been vegan? And if not, how has the transition been? Um, we haven't been vegan for all our lives. I have, like, when did we start transitioning for me? You were around three and you were around one. Yeah, and the thing is, when you're a toddler, and like, relating to what Cody's saying, um, it was easy and quick for Nora. Then I think that main... Um, reason is because, like, my baby cousin, she's around Nora's age, um, and she is actually, she just loves strawberries. She comes to our house, and we have, like, this plate of fruits. Like, it has blueberries, strawberries, and she'll just eat all of it. She won't really eat anything else. Um, so, and she, like, she even drinks, um, I think, coconut uh, milk or yeah like something like that and she just she doesn't really I haven't seen her eating um, any meat so I think it's really easy for toddlers because they like for literal <laughs> younger kids because they just like the taste of fruits because it's sweeter than other things so it might be easier for them um, for me I think it's more on the side of like they don't choose what they eat yeah as an adult it would be harder because they can choose what they eat what they eat and they have a really bigger choice than if you're younger yeah and especially for adults if they've been um 
if they haven't been plant-based for most of their life, well, that's most of their life. So they might be like, um, cause I have a lot of friends. They're just so into cheese. Like sometimes it's a specific food that they cannot let go of like cheese or like hot dogs or like specific Burger King hamburgers. Um, or something like that because I don't know that that those foods are just addicting maybe yeah so you know kind of like to wrap up I guess what we're saying is that the sooner you start the better like Max said oftentimes kids don't really have a choice in what they're eating if they're younger it's whatever we as parents decide to cook and put on the plate um, for them so we can you know nudge it into the right direction if your kids are a little bit older you know like 10 and up uh, it's definitely going to be harder to transition. However, oftentimes, if kids are given the knowledge, um, especially when it comes to animal rights and environment, they probably care less about their own personal health, but they do care about the animals or something like that. So if you, you know, talk about it, about the animal rights, look into some videos, watch some documentaries or something together, uh, they might actually be the ones who are going to come to you and say, mommy, I want to change. I don't want to hurt animals. I don't want to do this. So they might go into the right direction. Um, just like Miss Cody said, exposure, exposure, exposure. You know, my kids didn't like broccoli the first time I gave it to them, but I kept going, cooked it in different directions, and then they enjoyed it. Um, and one more thing, like people usually, um, they care, yeah, like you were saying, they care more about animals, and I forgot what I was going to say, so I'm just going to let you know if I interrupted you. How about the health? Um, and just like, you know, Dilip mentioned, there are a lot of different tr uh, transitional foods out there on the market right now. So, you know, if you are serving chicken nuggets, then you can just try to get the plant-based version of exactly the same thing and see how your family reacts to it and then transition it that way. So some families, it's easy to just, you know, after the documentary, they see they transition overnight. And some families, they might take some time and they just replace things little by little. And just like me, I said, the example with the cousin, the little cousin that she has, Kids are naturally um, attracted to colors and the real, you know, fruit flavor. So oftentimes we are the ones that are changing the taste buds by giving them chicken nuggets. And I remember when me, I was three, I had a little bit of um, uh, a chicken leg. And I was saying, like, you have to finish your dinner before I give you the dessert. And the dessert was fruit. And I was looking at the two different things. And I'm like, what am I thinking before I became a food for life instructor? You know, so, uh, yeah, don't give up. Keep trying. And, and before we go to a new, I wanted to echo that. So I, I uh, work in the local schools. I'm a nutrition education director at a local elementary and middle school. And I do programs for K through five, K through four primarily. And when I expose kids to this kind of food, they love it. Uh, they We have a thing called the healthy snack program. And when the children have the oatmeal or the rice and beans or quinoa or any number of foods, they're usually very excited. And uh, even people who say things like, I don't like kale, you make a nice kale smoothie. And uh, I haven't had any counter examples. Everybody has always loved that. So it's a matter of exposing people to food. You don't have to spend a lot of money. There's a misconception, you really don't. Um, you know, Don't worry about going organic initially if that's not important to you. Uh, and you can buy frozen vegetables, frozen organic vegetables, uh, You know, really inexpensively. Um, you don't have to shop at, I like to shop at a co-op and sometimes at Whole Foods Market, but you can go to um, any grocery store and uh, you can get fruits and vegetables. And we'll come to you, me, in a second, but I wanted Anu to answer this question. Have you been vegan for your whole life? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And had, do you feel any a deficit? Do you feel left out as being a vegan or anything like that? Okay. Nope. Can you give an example? Um, we homeschool. We've been homeschooling starting in first grade, but when you were going to school, like um, kindergarten or, or preschool, or even now when you go to parties, can you describe um, any difficulties or is it a big mm, deal? I can definitely relate with Mia because when I was in kindergarten, basically everyone came to school with a cheese stick in their lunch. And then I think like they all named their cheese sticks. It was so weird. I'm like, what? <laughs> and then, um, and then I, felt a bit left out because I didn't have a cheese stick to name. Um, you should have told me. I could have bought you a vegan cheese stick. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it's, yeah. So never, I don't really feel left out um, because there are vegan everythings. Like at birthday parties, there is vegan cake. 
and vegan cupcakes and vegan cookies and vegan ice cream. Um, and if you're missing something, if you're transitioning and you're missing something, I assure you there is a vegan version of something. Someone must have invented it. Mia, you wanted to share something. Yeah, I was also thinking about like, I was just really thinking about this topic and I was like, wing idea. So what if like, not in COVID times, but like in other times have friends ever come to your house and had dinner over your house and they know you're vegan. So they're like, mm, I don't really want this food. I want like real um, meat and stuff. And I just thought of a brilliant idea. So you just say, okay, this is a real meat sandwich. Uh, here you go. And it's actually not. And you trick them. Um, because I actually, um, the cheese that my mom gives me sometimes, and, and um, she makes grilled cheese sandwiches sometimes for lunch, and they're, the, the fake cheese, the vegan cheese, it tastes so real. <laughs> like, so real. So real that I can remember what it tasted like. And it's just crazy. So I, I would just, I'm just imagining, daydreaming, giving my friends that, and they'll be like, mm, okay. And then they put it in their mouth, and they're like, mm, this is really good. And I say, you just ate a vegan hamburger. <laughs> and they're like, that tasted so real. Yeah. So then they're like, give me more, please. The there, products there. that are coming up now, they are so much taste, the taste, they're really doing a great job trying to mimic the taste exactly for those people who want to transition, but they're not, you know, the taste buds are not quite ready yet. So look into those. And then, oh, go ahead. Especially cheeses. There's so many kinds of cheese. So Mayoko's, it makes cheese out of oat milk, I believe. I don't think it tastes very good. <laughs> so what, what kind of vegan cheese do you like? What kind of cheese do you like? I like I like Daya cheese. Daya is a brand. Um, that's my favorite. And I also like <coughs> um, I also like Veal Life cheese and Chow cheese. Mm. There's so many brands. The one thing we would ask you to watch out for is they do tend to have sodium, not as much as their dairy counterparts, and they tend to be high in fat, not as much as their dairy counterparts. So we occasionally, we don't get grilled cheese that often. How often do I make it for you? Maybe once or twice a month. No, less often than that. I would say maybe five times a year or something. No, five mm -hmm. times a year. More often? Ten times a year. Okay, so maybe ten times a year when we make grilled cheese, and so it makes a wonderful grilled cheese. I do make quesadillas periodically, uh -huh. and with quesadillas, I'll put a little bit of cheese. Sometimes in mine, I don't put any vegan cheese or anything, and then beans and and vegetables are great. Um, Max, do you find yourself left out at all as being a vegan when you're in school? And this year has been strange because a lot of time you've been home, but if you can think back to when you were in school, did you ever feel left out at all as being a vegan at school or birthday parties or anything? No, not really. Um, because I go around in school and I'd sit down at lunch and I'd know what cheese is made of. Um, and in my head, I would be going to trash and vomiting or something. Can you repeat that? In your head, you do what? In my head, I would run away and like vomit or something. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you know. <laughs> yeah. How about, how about you guys in Omaha? Uh, Ellen, Ava, you've been remote this year, but you're going back in person in August. So what? Um, if you think back to schools or birthday parties or events, do you ever feel left out? No, not really. If we go to if we as a family like go to a friend's house or like when we go to our family's house our grandparents house for thanksgiving we always bring some sort of vegan dish that we can have and even like when we stay at our grandparents house during the day they're always really good at like making sure we have food that we can eat speaking of thanksgiving all of you guys are coming to my thanksgiving one year aren't you oh yeah definitely <laughs> Tell everybody about the TBS Triangle Vegetarian Society Thanksgiving. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us about our Thanksgiving. Um, oh yeah, so my dad has a Thanksgiving um, every year on Thanksgiving Day. Um, and it's at this restaurant, Parazad, which is near our house. And um, it's like such a great Thanksgiving. There's like so much food and i've been there every year for thanksgiving except for the year i was born and 
last year. Um, which was sad. We were there last year for takeout. It was takeout. I wasn't in the restaurant, and it wasn't as good. Anyhow, the point is, there's like food piled everywhere. There's so many dishes. There's macaroni. There's pasta. There's cobbler. There is cobbler. There's shepherd's pie. There's salad. There's uh, how many desserts uh, are there? There's hold on, I'm trying to remember. There's um, so many dishes. Every, there's there's cranberries. There's mashed potatoes. There's gravy. Everything you can think of, and then that's like maybe half of it, and then the other half is all dessert. And it's like there's there's chocolate cherry cups, there's peach cobbler, there's pumpkin pie, there's black bean brownies with pink icing, there's uh, almond bars, and so many things. Okay, okay, you convinced us. We're coming. <laughs> We're coming. We're coming too. Uh, all you can eat. And yeah. cookies, gingerbread cookies, uh, chocolate chip cookies. Isn't there a pumpkin? I already said pumpkin. Yeah. Pumpkin patties. Yeah. <laughs> and it's funny because you go past. I'm always busy, and we get lots of media, TV Pumpkins. crews. So I'm I'm talking to them, and so I actually don't eat till the very end. So I go past the dessert area often, and I look at it, and it looks great. And when I go back five ten minutes later, it's different. There's new meringues. things out there. They My meringue. Yeah, it just goes and goes and goes and goes, and we keep the price low. It's something like what uh, I kept it like twenty dollars for many years. Now it's like thirty. And we don't turn anybody away. Somebody who says, I'd like to come, but I lost my job. We'll say, come for free or come for a low cost. We, we, we don't turn people away. So it's a great event. North and Carolina. You can eat. And it's all vegan. Wow. It's all vegan. And uh, it's not all limited fat, although we have a number of dishes that are limited fat. But, uh, um, but uh, we have people who fly in from several families come from the Chicago area every year. We started getting people from Canada. We get people from Florida. Uh, upstate New York, uh, California. We have one or two families who come. So we get people from, from many places. It's great. Um, so oh, and can I say something? Go on. Okay, I really hope you enjoyed my dramatized version of how to eat a popsicle. <laughs> <laughs> we were drooling this whole time. <laughs> who would like to talk about holidays? I, I spent a lot of time talking about Thanksgiving. So maybe Cody, would you like to talk about holidays with kids and plant-based eating? Yeah, so like, um, you know, Ava said, you know, we'll bring um, food with us for holidays when we do go, and that's very helpful. And we also share it. We encourage others to try it, and those who have just really love it, you know. Um, but we just make it a no big deal, you know. Most of my family is not the same way we are, um, so those other things are out there. And, yeah, they just – you know, they respect us, we respect them, it's their choice, and we just share our dishes, and it's been fun. So the kids, you know, say, Grandma, you know, you want to try this, I made this, and they're more apt to try it, knowing that the grandkids made it and had a hand in it. So then they're like, oh, this is delicious, you know, and then they decide they want to try the recipe on their own sometimes. So it's, it's been a really great experience, and it's still, you know, just don't let that hold you back from going to, to family events, of course, you know, so... Any, any event that you feel safe, you know, to go to a picnic or whatever, you know, bring your favorite vegan dish and maybe bring a copy of the recipe just in case somebody wants to try it. Ella, have you ever made anything for your uh, family outside of your immediate family at a holiday? Yes, actually. Uh, I, I, meant little, I meant little Ella. Oh, little Ella, sorry. <laughs> um, not during a holiday, but when we went to go see our grandparents, I did make a blueberry tart. Nice. And, and go, on, go on, Big Al. I didn't mean to interrupt you. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. So my, uh, we typically host, um, you know, for holidays. Um, and I just do a variety of different dishes. So when people come over, everything is vegan. But there's so many different things that, you know, people... I'm sorry. Wasn't there curry last time? And like there was, yeah. Like I always change it up, so no matter who's coming, and nobody else other than like our immediate family is vegan, is plant based, and there's so many different dishes that they're bound to find three or four that they like, you know. Um, and they always like, wow, what's the recipe for this? What's the recipe for this? Oh, I really like this one, you know. So even if they don't like everything, um, they're definitely going to find something, you know. And they always live with their belly full. So and and speaking. Of uh, Kobe mentioned something about picnics. I wanted to mention our next So Many Cooks in the Kitchen show is So Much Picnic Food. That's coming up on July 24th. Uh, and then, um, you know, the kids, uh, in August, it's your first birthday. <laughs> so we had this idea. Um, it was really your idea, I think, Cody, I think, and uh, of getting the kids to cook. 
And uh, so we had three shows in quick succession last August. We weren't sure what we would do with this. We thought we would do a summer camp in August and then see what happens. And uh, uh, you guys had a lot of fun with that. And uh, we decided, let's do this, maybe not every month. So we do these shows every other month. And so uh, uh, kids, you should start thinking about what you want to make. And I, I thought the theme would be kind of cool. We've come up with you know, our first birthday. So it'll be our celebration of one year together. And um, for the rest of the world who watches it, these would be foods you can make at a birthday party. So has anybody thought of what you're making yet? I mean, we just recently thought of the theme, so probably not. But uh, uh, Mia and Max, have you thought of what you might make for our first birthday party in, in uh, uh, August? We haven't set the date, but it's probably going to be the second week of August, I think. We're not yeah. sure yet. And I didn't tell them yet, so they're okay. hearing it right now for the first time. <laughs> oh, okay. So if you have any ideas of what, what uh, birthday party food you might make, please share. And Anu? I might make... Uh maybe brownies or cupcakes or cookies. You know who makes really good brownies is Miss Cody. And she made some brownies for so many cooks in the kitchen. So you could modify her recipe perhaps. Um, anybody else, Mia, Max, um, Ava or Ella? I was thinking making like a cake. The, the cake was the first thing that popped into my head, but I don't know. <laughs> um, I was thinking because I recently, um, just started like baking a little bit and one day my parents were out in the garden and i was just making vegan chocolate chip cookies inside of the house and nobody knew and yeah you knew the, at one and a half way through like and we were not allowed to come in so <laughs> I locked all the doors and um just started making vegan cookies and then um for dinner we had them at dessert and they looked kind of lumpy so next time I will like smooth it out more, but they were so good. Like so, so good. I couldn't stop eating, but the sad thing was I only made four. So <laughs> I didn't get more. And the thing that I liked that Mia did was she didn't like get flour from there. She blended oats. Wonderful, so wonderful. How about you guys in Omaha? Any initial thoughts what you might make for our first birthday? Can you believe it? It will be one year in August. First birthday. Um, I don't know. I'm thinking maybe vegan ice cream since we kind of recently got an ice cream maker. So maybe something like that. I'll do some practice and do Yep. <laughs> can, I, can I get some of the end products of your practice? Oh, yeah. Sure. <laughs> we'll ship it to you. <laughs> Ella? It Blue might Ella. be a bit melted. <laughs> <laughs> It'll like be a little box and the box will be all special. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have no idea. No idea. No problem. Still a long ways away. Mm -hmm. So um, we'll be wrapping up in a moment. So any last minute questions, please pose them. But but while we're waiting for last minute questions, maybe Cody and then Ella, uh, uh, one of you could talk about um, Food for Life and the other could talk about um, about Physicians Committee. Cody, you want to talk about the Physicians Committee? Yeah, I'll talk about the Physicians Committee for Responsible Medicine. It's found on PCRM.org. And it's a wonderful nonprofit organization it's based out of Washington, D.C. Um, they uh, really advocate for mm -hmm. free research and they pre, pre research what the results are as far as nutrition goes. and. But that's why we promote whole food plant-based because it's been proven that it will actually prevent, halt, and even reverse chronic non-communicable diseases. So that's that's what we wanna do. That's what PCRM is about. They also advocate for policy changes in DC. So they wanna advocate for the health of our nation. So that's what I, why I love them so much. And um, Dr. Bernard founded it, I believe it was 1985. And so we have members, physicians, healthcare providers, food for life instructors worldwide, wonderful organization. So that's also where we got our food for life training. And I'll let Ella talk about that. Yes, so the food for life classes, um, if I remember correctly, was it 2001, 2002 that they started the classes? Something like that, right? Um, it was even before then. Even before then, okay. I think so. uh, but there, uh, the food for life um, classes are a variety of different classes. They're science-based uh, classes. The curriculum 
that they provide. And they're on different topics on cancer, kids, nutrition, um, weight loss, digestive hormones, you know, you name it. So if you go to foodforlifeclasses.org, you're going to find a description of all these classes information. And if you're interested in taking a class, you can just look up by your zip code or by the instructor and you can find uh, if there's a class happening. For example, if you would like to see how a class kind of looks like, you're welcome to join next Saturday. I'm teaching a class on digestive um, uh, health and it's free to join uh, and it's virtual. So anybody can uh, log in and you just find the uh, registration information on the foodforlifeclasses.org. Um, and yes, um, there are about 300 instructors or so um, all over the, the country. So not just actually in the United States, but international. Um, and actually in our so many cooks in the kitchen show, there's people coming from all over the place in the world, which is really cool to see. And the good news is because of the pandemic, we haven't had more trainings. We sometimes get questions. Uh, I'm vegan. I'm whole food plant based. I want to be a food for life instructor. Um, I, I love being a food for life instructor because all of us have such depth of knowledge. I, I feel very confident if I if I never knew uh, you, Ella, and I knew somebody was in Rhode Island. I actually went to graduate school in Rhode Island, and if an old colleague said I'd like to take a class, without if I didn't know you, just looking you up, I'd say, oh, there's there's a, a young lady named Ella. She'd be a perfect instructor because I know you would be just by the fact that you've been uh, picked by PCRM. They're very picky <laughs> in picking us. It's pretty difficult to become an instructor and. Um, but the good news is that, uh, that they're going to do some virtual uh, certification this fall, I think, and that just got announced a week or so ago or two weeks ago. So if you're interested in becoming an instructor, the window's open, you can apply, and you have to do a variety of things. You have to show that you have a history of teaching plant-based eating. You have to have some videos if you're cooking. You have to have a background check, and then they interview you, and if it all goes well, you'll you know, you, you have to pay a fee and then you get uh, you get trained. And we have ongoing training every month. Uh, we have uh, instruction in nutrition and, and uh, other information. We had a wonderful uh, talk uh, just a few days ago on universal meals, this idea about getting rid of common allergens, foods that people avoid for a variety of reasons. And then you have these universal foods that anybody can eat. And I think it's a great idea. So hopefully you'll see more about that uh, in the near future. So any final comments before we wrap up, kids or adults, Anu? I have a comment. Um, it's kind of unrelated, but um, do you like my bracelets? <laughs> Tell them how you made the bracelets. I made them just before the show. Um, basically, I cut strips of paper, and then there's no glue. I just folded them together. She's an expert at origami. Wow. She, she's uh, very good at math. I, I teach math, by the way. <laughs> she's very good at math, and she goes to a, a weekly program uh, uh, from MoMath, National Museum of Mathematics, on um, Fridays. Yeah, Friday. folding, folding Fridays. Fridays. So. I learned how to make these on Friday. <laughs> so, you know, the, one, one thing I'll say is these kids are so wonderful, so dynamic, and it looks like they're old friends. They've been together forever, but they've never met each other. And we're hoping after the pandemic, maybe we could pick, we could kind of um, uh, get you guys together. Would you guys all like to get together and spend some time together? <laughs> Mia? Um, also, there is this thing happening in the summer, so it's for fifth graders. Um, and up, and basically, it's like a writing sports camp. So you can you can make uh, videos, you can interview like people from like your favorite like either like the Boston Patriots team or like whatever. You can just or you can just like write books and have fun. And I just um and um how like it's in July and um what else yeah so because um anu was mentioning math um mia was mentioning when it's talk about this writing camp that she just signed up for it's free to join and it's done by a, a children's author the name is um not coming to my mind right now but i can definitely post the information if anybody's interested um anybody who has a love for writing and it starts i believe 11 years old and up um but yeah it's he's a great um guy and he does a lot of uh, professional development in classrooms just teaching kids how to take their creative writing to the next level. Cody, do you and your family have any final thoughts? Um, Ella wanted to see if you guys can guess what's different about her appearance. And <laughs> what, what do you think, Anu? She cut her hair. 
Yeah, mm -hmm. we cut off like 14 inches of hair and she's yes. donating it. <laughs> Ella, you always look wonderful, whether your hair is short or long. <laughs> well, thanks, everybody. We hope that you'll join us, uh, adults, for our adult show. Kids can join for sure. So many picnic, uh, so much picnic food, uh, uh, mid late July, and um, I'm going to a math teacher summer camp. That's why we're doing it in late July, not early July, <laughs> and then uh, about a few weeks after that, we'll be back with the kids. Um, Anytime, who, anybody who's watching, feel free to share comments, what kinds of shows you'd like. Um, so we'll, we'll do the birthday show in August, and then we'll, we haven't started thinking about October, but we should soon. So if you have ideas of things you'd like to see, please share. So thanks, everybody, for joining us today, and we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. 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 We hope you have enjoyed watching us cook. Thank you for watching. We hope to be back in a few months. Let us know what you would like to see us cook. In the meantime, watch our parents. So many cooks in the kitchen. So, so many, many kids, kids in the kitchen. kitchen. Plant-based food to prepare. So, so many kids, kids in the kitchen. With ideas, we're happy to share. share.